Our lesson for today is on rotational dynamics. And we have a device called the Moment of Inertia Demonstrator, which will allow us to see how the effects of changing torque and the moment of inertia of the system affects the acceleration of the system. The device consists of a uh, pulley, a series of, of three sized pulleys with a string wrapped around it. From there, we will hang a weight of different masses, and this will provide our torque for the rotation of the system. We can also change the position of the weights by sliding them inward and outward. And we'll now see how changing those positions creates the acceleration of the system. Great. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and measure the time for a falling weight to rotate the apparatus. We have it set on the large pulley. We have a 200 gram mass, and I'm going to have it set one meter above the floor, and we will time it. Here we go. One, three. One, two, three. Now the falling weight is providing the torque, but it's actually through the tension in the string. Okay, we got a time of 8.4 seconds. All right, we're going to do this again, but this time we moved our weights inward from the rods here. We've tightened them down. We're going to set the, our weight, a hanging weight, one meter above the floor, and we're going to time it again. Last time was 8.4 seconds. One, two, three. 3.4 seconds this time. Obviously, the same torque has produced a much higher acceleration with the weights moved inward. We can change the amount of hanging mass, which will provide different amounts of torque. We can change the diameter of the pulley, which will provide a different amount of torque. And we can move the weights inward outward, which will change the inertia of the system. Although, in the, in the laboratory, what we want to do is actually try to calculate the inertia of the system. And we're going to do that two ways. We're going to do it dynamically by actually measuring the acceleration of the system and by the time it takes the weight to fall or the number of rotations that the uh, apparatus turns in a certain amount of time. And we're going to then calculate the torque which is produced by the tension of the strain. Lastly, we'll take the masses and the dimensions of the rod, the pulleys, and the individual weights and do a summation of the inertia and compare those. This ought to provide a good confirmation of our theories on rotational dynamics. And last of all, we'll look at energy. We'll look at the potential energy of the falling weight, how that translates into the kinetic energy of the rotating apparatus and the kinetic energy of the falling weight. And hopefully, conservation of energy goes to